So you can hear it running. That sounds like a compressor's twisted off. Here's our insulated pin here. Oh, amperage, 1.5. And she just runs and runs. Ew, I didn't like that. Made in Thailand with pride. Good to see they're sourcing their products with the best available. Let's see if we can. Oh, let's make it out of aluminum. That way it doesn't stick to the guys' chucks. That's nice. Thanks. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. guys so today we're working on some good old trains that aren't running very well and this one here wasn't running a minute ago that's actually putting out some heat so this might be the only one that actually works right yeah it's getting cold so we've got two of them that's not working right this one's running just got here went upstairs looked up there it's kind of a hodgepodge little bit of a mess it's all new unfortunately it wasn't us so you can hear it running come your gauges and you're equalized so you're probably dumping on yourself oh yeah that sounds like a compressor's twisted off it just kept on that's what we're trying to figure out we got one that had a uh, thermostat that said no power one section of the building is actually working which must be this one right here this one's cooler and warmer like you normally figured well, I love the exposed wire here, right on the back side where everybody through a drive through can come through and see the work. You would have figured if you're gonna go that much trouble to do a nice box up there, you would have just ran it down a little further. Got expensive disconnects, but skimped on the, the last few feet there. These are 21 that was just built. All right, let's go upstairs here. High security. So we get up here, here we go and three units all goes downstairs variable makeup air units here the one that actually is running that's assuming that they kept them one two three actually there's four units there look at that that must be those mitsubishis this must be the one that's actually working yeah it's feeling somewhat cool filters are kind of mediocre they were 10 two inch filters and they stuck in what was available. For whatever reason, one of them said it was completely dead. Which I bet you is this one, it's not running. But, ah, oh, lucky there. That was easy. Got moisture on the bottom of that. That's kind of weird for a drain to come out that high. That's, that's a new one. That's how that one is though. Looks like that one's coming down from there, runs into there, down, they all go through the same trap, then down they go. This one here is just not even running. Filter on that one's halfway okay. Make sure the filter dryer's in right. Yeah, it's just Burger City. Let's take a look inside here, see what we got. We've got the drain coming down, hooks there. You'd think the water'd have to come out through this pan right here. See? See how that pans down there? <laughs> um, yeah. So I wonder if the way this has been working is if it's been draining out and coming down to there. That's, I, that would explain why we got water there. How this worked last year though, that's what I wanna know. So they did all of them wrong? Let's look at the instructions. I, you never know a train. I didn't forget how gravity worked. So look here, down, flow conversion go figure right it's blowing down it's gonna be at the bottom up flow it'd be right there in that center where they're at now hmm look at this watch watch this now look at it when we're going right or left they're going way down here at the very bottom horizontal left horizontal right they didn't put the damn drains in right i mean hello that's why you don't let the the new kid that has no clue do something as simple as the drains unless you're going to show him how to freaking do it and what's bad is is the head installer should have double checked it that's also why you should have the service people and start the equipment. Well, that costs more money. Well, it's to catch like this. You know how bad this makes them look like now? So when you can't even hook the drains up right, now I feel like I gotta do it through and double check everything. And with those drains being that low, that's below the pan. How are you gonna do that when the duct works hooked to it? Unflippin' believable, buddy, unbelievable. 
let me go through the history make sure we didn't do this i can't imagine we did but they're gonna need some work they need this fixed might as well see if we can get it going so i had to peel off the foam even after i wiped it off on my leg and stuff it just wouldn't run peeled it off reset it we're gonna have to set this up here anyway until we figure out what we're doing with this this drain i don't know if we're gonna go ahead and let it run into the overflow pan and let it drain out that way or what it's kind of stupid because what's the point of an overflow pan if it's going to go in the same drain uh, generally you'd run it to another place because if it's plugged anywhere it's going to plug up here in this trap same thing with this one here i don't see how it it just must have got lucky that's probably why they laid it over here in the corner it just finally kicked on out of time delay it's warm on the dryer cold on the suction let's put her together and see if that helps take some of the heat out so we got one working and this one was working earlier this was the one that was dead and i'm pretty sure this one here's the one that was acting like it was pumping and dumping on itself so we got to find out what was going on with it my feelings is the installers need to come back whack the legs off of it lower it not something i can do very easily by myself this given moment lower all three of them down and and, and repipe it correctly all right let's take a look at this one here with the compressor let's see what's going on with it oh yeah oh yeah look at that she is hotter than a two dollar pistol fancy nancy we've got a high pressure switch low pressure switch and that's about it is this single phase let's look here on the side is the compressor running backwards is it wired wrong that's what i was wondering black and red's going to the contactor black and red is common run start goes to the capacitor that thing is hot oh my god it's hot the orange goes to the capacitor, there it is. Let's see if it's wired right. It's on hermetic, capacitor's hotter than heck. You've got common going to red, which is the same side, opposite of, good. So we're fine there on that. So there's nothing wrong with that, other than maybe the capacitor might be wacky jacky. Made in Thailand with pride. Good to see they're sourcing their products with the best available. Let's see if we can, oh, let's make it out of aluminum. That way it doesn't stick to the guys' chucks. That's nice, thanks. I'm a hater. I am a hater of the train. Let's go ahead and flip this turkey on. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and kill the low voltage so we can rapid cycle this thing. Okay, low voltage is off. Flip on the disconnect box, grab the amp meter. Let's do some basic common sense. Use our insulated pin here. Oh, the amperage, 1.5. And she just runs and runs. Ew, I didn't like that. Ooh, now it's stuck. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, she didn't like that very well. This compressor's jacked up. There's your pressures. Pressures are 245. Why is that fan still running? We're pulling power on the fan. How the is the fan still running? What did you do? You got the hot wire coming through. One's hooked to there. Oh boy, here goes phone call. All right, so I figured out what's going on here with this fan. It stopped spinning finally. It's kind of windy out here, but watch this. When I plug this back into the compressor, watch the fan pick up speed. <laughs> so it's pulling off a, one of the legs of the compressor. So we got some sort of weirdness going on there. I, I'm looking at this capacitor it looks like it's wired right anyhow this compressor screwed uh we're gonna order a new one it's warranty uh let's go ahead and for giggles hold that and we'll check the individual different uh leads oh is she stuck yeah she's stuck 50 61 amps she's stuck now all right well it had a bad day that, that thing was twisted off and now it's stuck got a hold of someone and the installation company is going to correct the drain lines so we don't have to worry about that and like that we're right back to change the compressor we've got the new Inficon vortex dual so my good friend over at Inficon sent me this to try out because i said you know you guys have been great with the leak detector what else do you got? Because if your product is good as a leak detector, let's try out some of your other stuff. It's got a uh, strap so you can carry it up the ladder. It's not very heavy. A lot of this seems to be kind of hollow. So the only thing I didn't like about it is it's a little tall, but otherwise 
it's pretty light. The fan on this thing is freaking huge. I think it's one horse motor. What we got here is 410A. I've got a completely empty jug. So let's see how long it takes to recover this. This thing is supposed to be able to recover 410A faster because of the micro channel they've got in this and bigger motor. You know, you're always fighting, trying to recover in warmer weather. Now, granted today, we're only probably about 70 out here, so it's not very warm, but go with our weight scale here. Got Testo, another good supporter of the channel. My 557's here, which I've been really happy with. There is the weight scale. Let's see how long it takes to do it. Zero it out. Okay, we're zeroed there. Okay, start the stopwatch there. We've already bled everything all the way up to here. We are using a 3 8 hose. It's got a built-in flare fitting here so you can actually run it right through the filter dryer right there. So let's go ahead and get started. Just knock 24 seconds off. I did pull the valve core on the liquid line there. Got it open here, open there. I'm gonna go ahead and dump it into the vapor. It don't seem like it makes much of a difference. So there's that. Get her going. We're pulling liquid. See the liquid right there. As soon as that's done, we'll start dumping the other in there. You can see our weight going in. So I don't know if this thing got twisted off because of the possible not being started correctly or what. Okay, there goes the liquid. There's some suction to it. All right, so far, three pounds of refrigerant. Now, like I said, this was an empty tank. Right at about two minutes and a half, but 30 seconds of that is sitting there talking. 76 degrees out here. We're pulling it pretty quick. We only got one Schrader core pulled. And we do have 275 pounds of discharge on it, so it's, it's fighting against some pressure. Impicon Vortex Dual. So, I mean, there's a few different ones out there that look very similar. I think this is one of the latest ones. Like I said, that that's pumping some heat out the front. So we're at 72 degrees there. Let's see what kind of heat this thing's rejecting. So we got a 10 degree rise across that. Five pounds, nine ounces is what the factory charge is right there. So 4.3 pounds, I'd say it was factory charged only. And still running about 275 on the head. And we are just about completely empty. And we're at five minutes, 45 seconds. Main 21. Main 22. All right, so we're in a negative. Still only running 275 on a head if you're lucky. Tank's really not hot. That's really surprising. Get the old HK Micro out. They uh, make a heck of a nice product. Get a True Tech Tools, guys, as usual. Survival for your promo code to save yourself some money. A little hard to see out here. So we're running at a maximum temperature of 97 degrees. Yeah, it really ain't running crazy hot. Go ahead and put this on purge. And we'll close this, the purge. Done, valve it off. We're gonna valve this thing off because we don't wanna break that vacuum that we're in, three, three or four inches. We wanna break that with nitrogen. Let's go ahead and see what kind of liquid we get out of this thing. That's it, wow. That's a heck of a purge cycle right there. There we go. We're still gonna get better heat on both sides than if you were just doing it with the one, one particular head. I mean, look how fast that thing gets in there. There we go. And I've said before, you ain't supposed to do it like that. You're supposed to cut it out. I don't do that. Only if I absolutely have to. That suction line, it looks like that might be a little bit of pain in the butt. And as far as getting too hot, I'm able to hold my hand on that pressure switch so it's not obviously too hot. If it would burn my skin off. Good old factory. Gave me no room to pull that out. A little bit of a bend on it. That's what you call piss poor engineering. You can't get in there to do that. Could have loosened it possibly here on the bottom, but the way they hodgepodge that in there is kind of shitty too. Let's see if we can get this thing picked up now. The way I already got the model number and stuff on the compressor. The rubber feet fit in so easy, they fall out just as easy. Really thought out, bud. Another high school engineer. Well, it looks like I can fit that in there when we do it at the factory and we put this panel on last. If you want to take that all apart, you can take all that there off, which is pretty much what we're gonna have to do. There you go, kids, that's how you do it. 
guess what? Screwed up. Should have taken it apart. That's an old trick. If I would have just taken that off, I could have could have done this without screwing that up a little bit. Or the factory could just build a better unit and not have to do it at all. If you're going to copy the scroll design, it's supposed to make it better. There we go. It's in the hole. There you go. Howdy doody doody. I don't fool with the nitrogen much on this. I'd have to push it through the suction side and back out that little bit. I don't, I don't get wound up on that. I used to try that and you know, honestly, you spend more time sometimes fighting it because you blow your alloy out and then you have to get on it again, which means more heat. More heat you get on that copper, more the copper breaks down. Still didn't get the heat uh, pressure switch too hot. It's benefit of getting on and off fairly quickly. Ah, I bought my hoses. I'm not gonna fight them now. Got it all the way around. Looks to me like she pulled in nice and deep. Let's go ahead and put the Schrader core back in there on the liquid line. Hardly, I've kind of not been using my dual hoses that often. I just really don't need to. Just to make it easy. See the new batteries there? They got a little green indicator to tell you that's good or not. And it has USB plug on it. Even got my Navac bucket here, along with my Viper wet rag breezing pad, which is pretty wicked. Today's video is a nothing but a commercial. We'll pop up there real fast and get that swapped out. I kind of forgot we need to do that dryer, so let's go ahead and purge some nitrogen through this thing. Oh my goodness. Look at that, blowing oil all over the place, which I really didn't want so it is a burnout i guess we're not using that refrigerant over does not smell like a burnout but that is some dark oil got everything cleaned up there we're going to go ahead and see if we can blow anything residual into the rag here wow all right after some deliberation thinking about it i believe they didn't use nitrogen that black crap that we got in the oil was carbon from not using nitrogen when they breeze it in. Uh, Cause I don't smell anything burnt. And so that's any more contaminated than what everybody out there that doesn't believe you need to use nitrogen is uh, doing to every system out there, which they claim it don't make a bit of difference. Well, guess what? There you go. You can see it firsthand. We got the nitrogen flowing. Let's go upstairs and get that filter dryer put on. Guess we'll pull it away as best we can. See if we can get in here without melting. I think I'm gonna go to the inside piece. We'll get a extension copper so we can get the stupid thing removed. Okay, like that. You can see the nitrogen's flowing. Got a crappy connection right up here. So we're gonna go ahead and chop that out. We'll put the dryer up here. Still coming through, which means it's actually able to uh, make it through the filter dryer. So let's go ahead and put a pressure test on real fast, see where we're at, spray the joints, make sure everything's good. Nice solid stream there. Make sure ain't nothing leaking on the pressure switches since we just got those heated up in that area. Spray these other joints down. Not seeing anything on those. Don't see anything on that. We'll give it a moment, but still. If the nitrogen's coming through and it's not leaking there, then we got it. I'm gonna make the best of a bad situation here. Use some of these little Whatever boxes they got here. Put one in the pan that keeps the water flow switch up high enough that any spillage isn't going to just trigger it. It's got a drain in there anyway. Found a metal one for there and then this one here. Same thing. This has been 
kind of bent and whatever else. Uh, that's got metal on the bottom, so that might actually trigger it. Yeah, it'll trigger it. So I can't have that. So we gotta have this on the bottom. Everything else looks like crap. What else are you supposed to do? Not happy with it. Okay, that'll help hold it in place. And then put that down there where it's a little bit lower. This is a positive coil, so we don't have the traps in there anymore, which is nice. Got a trap here for, which goes to Mitsubishi. Almost makes me worried that it's a double trap possibly, which may not drain, which makes me want to take this out. So let's leave that out and see if that helps. Maybe that's why there's water in there. It didn't, it probably didn't drain right. It probably went down to the trap and then backed up or something. I, I'll bet you that's what happened. Hey, we're still down here at 177.8 and didn't hit the start button, so whatever. Um, it didn't drop much, if at all. You always got some equalization in there. There she goes, ring, ring, ring. Why oh, she dropping fast too, look at her. Drop, drop, drop. Now we're not changing the capacitor or the contactor because we've checked those, they're fine. And in reality, they're freaking brand new. We're gonna go ahead and get the gauges and stuff set up for the, one of the other units over here. Might as well check these out while we're evacuating. So I have a feeling they weren't charged properly. And they barely give you enough room to even get your gauges on there. Such a <laughs> design. Looking at this, we have no 250 pounds ahead, 42 degree suction because the TXV is doing its job. There is no subcooling at all on this thing. 10 degrees. Okay, they want 10 degrees and we've got two. So we've got some issues there. Let's get this thing charged up. Hopefully before it shuts off. All right, so starting from this one right here, we've got the old gauges on there. We've got 2.7 on our subcooling, 250 head. So we're at 2.4 on that one on our subcooling. Theoretically, it's 3 8 line, so 0. 0.6 ounces for every foot. It's probably charged for 10 to 15 foot. And I bet there's probably about 40 feet there. Let's do 30 feet times 0. 0.6 ounces. A uh, pound and two, two ounces, one pound, two ounces. I guess we'll grab the old scale here so we can speed this up. I guess I got a 410A up there. It's good and add about a pound to this one, see where that puts us at. This thing here. 750 we can close our gas ballast it should be all pretty close to about the same thing right, let's do a valve off this is mainly going to be refrigerant it's not jetting back up right away so we'll go ahead and let it run some more because that battery usually is only good for one vacuum and that's about it went ahead and dumped a pound point 13 ounces on this one so we're seven degrees on that one so we're getting doggone close on that well something for you newbies that are just grasping subcooling superheat as you're adding refrigerant, your liquid line temperature, say you're empty, it's going to start to get warm. And it's going to get warmer. And eventually it's going to start to come back down in temperature. You want to be on the bottom side of that curve. If you ever watch the curve on your charts, if they even have paper charts anymore, when you're adding and that liquid line temperature starts to drop, you know you're on the correct side. So if you're doing it the old fashioned way, temperature minus your uh, saturated temperature, then you know that you're going the right direction. So sometimes I'll pop back and forth when I'm sitting here watching it, even though I've got it calculated out, like say it's 9.2, 9.3, I watch my liquid temperature as I add to see that it is coming back down, which is something that it is doing. We're running 261 and 121. This one here, 262 and 122. And we're running 8.3. All right, we're at 485, finally. Go ahead and give it the wiggle jiggle and see how well it holds. Go ahead and turn this thing off. If it comes up even to 700 area or whatever, I'm gonna be all right with it just because refrigerants are our only issue we've got now. These are all tuned in. I had uh, 11 and a half on this one, 10 on the other. Probably gonna need about two, and, two pounds, two and a half pounds extra to get it where we need it at. So far, 486, holding in there. All right, so we've got this one getting in there. It's got a little warmer, so the head pressures came up to like 283. It's only 92 degrees on the condensing temperature. 
a 7.9. Just got a nickel and dime this last bit in there and we should be good to go. Everything seems to be working fine. The inside uh, room's got all cool. It's probably gonna wrap this one up, guys. If you enjoyed the video and see more like it, smack it. Later.